After that, I will come through and get some explosive stars to my computer. So, who am I? My name is Ruben Ernstein Paul. My friends call me Rockstar. My personal Twitter handle is at, at Rockstar that you can use to keep about my talk. I'm nine years old and I attend an army school science classroom. So, my cyber security journey in um, my cyber security journey began with my very very long talk in Kentucky, where I spoke on InfoSec from the lack of AIDS. Then I went to IC Squares for the conference, where I spoke on creating a safe and secure cyber world for kids by kids. After that, I went to the QSEC con conference where I spoke on why kids make really good hackers and got, and got my first skin innovation for the close engineer, why kids make really good hackers. So, then I went to Ground Zero Infosec Summit 2014 where I spoke on Root Kids, developing Root Kids, the future of cybersecurity. By this time, people started calling me the chairperson of the conference, not because I was the most important person in the conference, but because I had to stand on the chair and reach for my phone to give me up. <laughs> so, then I went to the Eastside's Austin Conference, where I spoke on cybersecurity and the new generation. After that, I went to RSA, where I was unveiled on the server box as the real next generation of cybersecurity. After that, I went to the Hack and Box at Spoke Conference in Amsterdam in May, where I spoke on the ABC of cybersecurity as a kid in Stanford. Then I went to Hack for Kids, where I spoke on uh, Hack Wars as a new hope. And then I went to Jumpcon 2015, where I spoke on the cybersecurity office after this kid's job. And then I went to last time where I spoke on Task Force as a whole. Finally, I'm here speaking to all of you at the Browns and Uncle Sex Summit, cybersecurity, the art of cyber control. awarded America's Most Beautiful Baby. <laughs> when I was seven years old, I was honored to receive the title of being the youngest shallow girl known to a black belt in America. And recently, I won the title of being the youngest uh, second degree known to a black belt. And I won the Digital Storytelling Contest for the company of the kids in August 2014. And then I won the gold medal so now to my main topic at hand. What is Kung Fu and what is cyber Kung Fu? So, I'm going to ask you a question and I would like your response. What is Kung Fu? Martial arts. Fighting. Shoot, sure, thanks. Anybody? Anybody at all? Yeah, somebody over here. It's a form of martial arts. So, most of you think that Kung Fu is about fighting. The Chinese term of Kung Fu means any skill acquired through learning and practice. The, the word Kung Fu comes from two words, Gong and Fu. Gong, which means work, and Fu, which means merit. So Kung Fu means work of merit. For those of you who thought or answered that Kung Fu is about fighting, you are not wrong. Kung Fu is synonymously used with the word Wushu. Wu for military or martial, and Shu for skill or discipline. So we can describe cyber Kung Fu or cyber Wushu as a cyber martial art skill acquired through learning and practice with discipline in cyber security. <laughs> so let's talk, so let's say that we're going to talk about some Kung Fu and cyber Kung Fu. Talking about learning, here's one of the great quotes from the legend of Wu Life itself is your teacher, 
and you are in a state of constant learning. So, in my nine years of life, I've had a lot less, less life experiences than many of you here. But in all of my life experiences, whether it was good or bad, success or failure, I've learned something from them. My dad says that a person who is not learning, that is not learning, is a dead person. So, here are some learning elements that we learn in Kung Fu. Now we will apply it to how we learn it in Kung Fu. The first thing I learned in Kung Fu was stances. Then I learned about blocks, after that attacks, and finally some weapons. So, there are different types of stances in Kung Fu. For defense, for, the, for stability stances, we have defensive stances, like the bow stance or the horse stance, where both our weight and teeth are anchored to the ground, so it's easier to withstand attacks. And then for offensive attacks, and for, and for agile attacks, for defensive attacks, we have attacks standing like the other attacks that are standing, standing for the left hand, um, where, the, where all our weight is anchored on the back leg, so it's easier to avoid speech and it's easier to avoid kicking or something. For the best of some food attack, the stance is the adaptive stance. So, what is the adaptive stance? The adaptive stance is when you change your position based on your attacker's position. So, this can happen in the standing or attacker and pay attention. You can be a attacker the act and play the game. So, when you change your position, you make your attacker respond. So, an adaptive so adapt stance is an advantage stance. In my dad's book, Seven Qualities of Highly Secure Software, there's a quote from our senior master Joe that says, success or failure starts with the things you choose. So, what just that we have in Kung Fu and adapter stance, inside of Kung Fu, we want to have an adapter stance too. So, for this to happen, we must scan the attacker and pay attention to your attacker by using any con methods like network mapping and analyzing the scan results. To check for open ports and token protocols. And if any threat is detected, you must respond by changing your position. So, just as we talked about basic stances, we will now talk about basic blocks. Their blocks are most useful when you cannot avoid or evade an attack. So, the basic blocks are hand blocks. Like the upper block, lower block, outside block, or inside block. But did you know you can block your legs? The Christian block. But when you use your hands and legs to block, it is known as the four point block. This block is the best or most efficient block because it is the most complete and the most sure. So, let's say there is far enough. Your defensive blocks may not work because the adapter, uh, attacker adapts to things in your opening, bypasses the time of your block. As you see in this video, Bruce Lee blocks down the blockers or defender's hand and bypasses the time of block. Bypasses the time of block. So, uh, how does this really get down to the Fireball is a defensive block. Um, Firewall is a defensive block. Firewall is a defensive block. Um, now, uh, a hacker can bypass the firewall by um, using non canonical or non standard input. Um, and the input can be black as filter on the firewall. So, firewalls, um, using detection systems, and IPS are all blocks inside of Kung Fu. They are mainly used to protect from outside attacks. But what if the attack was from the inside, like a logic block? In this case, the attacker has the advantage because the attacker only has to look for one entry point, while the defender has to cover or secure all the entry points. <laughs> Is this how your final rule works? So, <laughs> we must not just have 
have one deep impression, but we must have layers of impression. Just as we have a four point block in one thing, we want to have a four point block inside of them. Which means we need no open and guard. All the points of square openings are secure. So, what we need to have a four point block inside the front code is we need to have educated people, secure processes, and secure technology. Educated people who know what they're doing with your company. Secure processes to make sure um, thing for threat modeling and code reviews. And finally, secure technology like firewalls, intrusion protection systems, intrusion prevention systems, and encryption. So, attacks in front of code. There are different types of attacks. The basic attacks are hits in front of code. So there are different types of kicks, so you can kick side kick, back kick, double back kick, double front kick, side 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 etc. So, incoming kicks. Then, there are different types of punches, and there's three punch, back kick, elbow strike, elbow, elbow strike, camera players, like hand, burn, move, on, type of etc. But, just as we know about attacks in front of we need to look at our viral tracker types in front of there are short range sliders, we use punches and really kicks. And then there are long range sliders, we use kicks more than punches. And then there are counter fighters who block and then attack. And finally, there are stealth fighters who usually um, are agile on the attack and usually step sideways or position themselves behind you before striking. But the best cyber to attack is. No, but the best. But then we have different types of attacker types in Cyberpunk. What is this? Who do you see in this picture? Ask that again. So, who do you see in this picture? What is this in this picture? Hacker. Yes, it's a hacker. But let me tell you my job. I've never seen anybody in the hoodie with a computer hacking people. In fact, the hacker today is someone who blends in with an old, another ordinary guy or girl. It can be your next door neighbor stealing your Wi-Fi connection or destructive employee in company. But cleverness. In this quote, I can see some student, the Chinese gentleman named Chinese, who says, Know your enemy and know yourself. You can fight hundreds of battles without them dying. So, what are the attacks in Cyberpunk Code? There are network attacks, like DOS, DDoS, or looking in the middle. There are system attacks, like buffer overflow, fire sticks, grains corner. There are software attacks, like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and cross-site exploitation. And there are people attacks, like social engineering and phishing. So, as you think, um, the a denial service is an attack in which the hacker makes a system or data unavailable to someone who needs it. A hacker can create a DOS by closing a board, overloading a website, or reloading it to my account, or you can use a document that will just extract, extract to some website. Basically, it's so a redirect to them to some website. A simple way to understand this is by looking at scripture. You see Thor's Hammer is on the border, it's by an internet service. And now to ARP speaking. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. The ARP will not be the IP address, the correct MAC address on the network, so that the route is accepted and sent. <coughs> the correct communication uh, to correct device on the network. So in ARP speaking, the attacker will spoof the IP table, will spoof the IP table, and change the IP. Uh, IP addresses to point to his MAC address so that he can intercept uh, or collect different uh, data data from different devices on the network. So, here, uh, a simple way to do this is by using a simple mailbox example. Uh, in all of our mailboxes is located in one common area, not in any place. Um, and in each of our mailboxes, there's a piece of laminated paper with our name and home address mapped to each other 
So that the post man knows when to deliver the mail. So uh, my home address is 1337, and Brian's home address for my next door neighbor is 1057. So, he's going to finish on the so last five minutes. So, if I were to get it, uh, get it, or if you get it, Brian's mail, I would have to take his home address before Brian's address. So, so that the postman thinks that Brian is me and I am me. So he'll get so we can intercept his mail. So, buffer for overflow. A buffer for overflow is a hack in which the hacker inputs more data than what the memory buffer can hold. If the code does not track how long the input is before copying it into the memory buffer, then the return address of the instruction folder will get overwritten and the hacker can turn to his malicious code. A simple way to understand this is by using the example of a birthday party. I've invited my friends to my birthday party, 31 Robin Street. A bad guy comes and puts a sign over my house address saying that the party has moved to his house. So when my friends go to his house, they get robbed. So, viruses. <coughs> Virus is a piece of malware that attaches itself to a host or a system and harms it or infects it. A really good example of this is Venom from the Spider Man series, who has to attach himself to Spider Man or a living organism for it to survive in the So, an injection attack. An injection attack is an attack in which the backing system accepts or the user supplies without any validation. Treated as a command. Keep it up. So, a good example of this is proteins. Proteins are good for you if you stay in the right amount of concentration, so don't forget to use your protein. But the amount in concentration is more than what you can handle, and you have a problem. So, snake venom. Is, okay, have you ever wondered what snake venom is made out of? The main ingredient is pro highly concentrated proteins. So, when a snake injects this highly concentrated, highly concentrated protein, aka venom, or aka snake poison, into your body, your body receives it as a command to shut down. So, a simple way to so how does uh, snake venom and proteins relate to an injection attack? It relates because proteins are like the beta. Uh, and the snake poison or highly concentrated proteins is also data that the body or the backend system accepts and has a command and seeks that command shut down. So cross site request for three. Cross-site request forgery is a very powerful hacker attack, and we see a hack best way to explain it in a Ugaan feature bank attack. You get a session established. You get an email with a link on it. You click on it. You realize that link in your bank account is stolen. So how does how did this happen? The hacker maliciously copied the link to transfer money from your from your bank account. A simple way to understand this is by using it's called your right to a in a candy shop. You present your invitation to the security guard. The security guard gives you an empty pass. There's another kid who wants, who wants some candy too. But he does not have an entry ticket or an invitation. So he tricks the kid with the entry pass to go in and get candy for him. This part of social engineering. How many of you all seen the movie Finding Nemo? Finding Nemo, in one scene, there's an angler fish with, uh, that uses its lure or light to attract other fish and capture it. 
But the best cyber counter to attack is a stealth attack. So we want to protect against all these attacks, but how does the attacker still break in? The, um, the attacker uses stealth attacks, like soap and smear, still being efficient, to go in unnoticed, uh, kind of invisible, like Mr. Indian. Or should I say Mr. Seven? So, what, just as we talked about basic stances, basic uh, rocks, basic attacks, now we're going to talk about basic weapons. Weapons are usually tools or attacks. Tools um, that aid in attack or defense. Here are some of the weapons that we had to learn in our world before second grade comes to black belt. And there's something like both stack, side, sword, magic, farmed out, um, daggers, etc. <coughs> so, but what are weapons and cyber There are tools and exploit elements. Different exploit elements, like the knife put element, the social engineering toolkit, uh, with the social engineering attacks, and exploit elements with like a Swiss Army knife and the hands of the pen hector, the inner crop framework for our scooping, DNA scooping, and no attacks, um, hashtag, hide your own job, and password attacks, and the good for client side attacks, the browser exploitation framework, and many more. So, as we talked about learning, now we're going to talk about practice. Here's another way to work, great quote from the, from the Legend of Lucy. I fear not the man who is cracking 10,000 cakes at once. I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. So I practice. So, in my life, I have, um, I have some life experiences where I weren't so good. Like, I ran the RN RF star man in my home folder. And this is kind of how it goes. So, now to my demonstration. Um, I'm going to practice what I teach, and I think you'll like my demonstration. So, to introduce my demonstration, last year I did the Java Apple Attack. Um, how many of you all know what Java Apple Attack is? So, a Java Apple Attack is an attack in which you predict a fake Apple, and when the user runs on it, it installs some malware or the uh, chance for this demo, and, so. uh, take over the system. But if the user does not click on that applet to run the application, then what we don't get that. So what I'm planning, what me and my dad thought would be cool this year is if we send the user to a fake website, and a fake website that you created, and it just got hacked without doing anything at all. No clicking, no nothing. They just got hacked. So I'm going to do that demo for you. Thank you. Basically, you harvest both the language, which in this case is the username and password of the user. Uh, and, but meaning the 
not to really need to copy the website or make a fake website. You can redirect the user there. I'm going to do a Skype channel. And I need my IP address so that I can map the, I can map, I can uh, get the credentials on the screen. I get, I can harvest the credentials. So my IP address is 172.20.10, 172.20.10.2. Smith. 
requires company, and that gives us to net zero, um, best team for the host, uh, host to host, so there are three, and it's all the IP address, this is an option to suggest, but none of them kind of came up, so <coughs> in this demo, I know that uh, 10.1 or 117.20.10.1 is the gateway, so we need to add that to target one. And 117.20.10.14 is the link split the box. Let's just double check that. So all the users looked up uh, the link in the disk in the actually in the attacker box, as we see in the AC control panel. There we have a hook on them, and this time is, is the user box. So I'm gonna go to the commands. And first thing that we're gonna do in persistence is called the two man in the browser attack. So what a man in the browser attack does is it will keep that hook. Uh, even if they change to another URL, so the web page book, the book will still be on that. So, uh, unless they close the browser. So, we're going to command one. The browser is hooked, so that's good. Then we're going to go to social engineering. We're going to go to a page notification bar. And then we're going to Change this and say you must install the download sample. That's okay. Go ahead. <laughs>
So we sat here and basically said that if you go to our website, and you're not trying to go to the website, go to the website. His name was a full and after the teacher. Ruben, Ruben, come outside, we can't see you. Yeah. I filmed the website, this is a social change toolkit. I did a beat book and I did a hand and browser. I don't know why they call it hand and browser, they should call it hand and browser, but anyway. <laughs> um, then I did a think presentation attack, I did a Google Fish attack, I used the Google Cat to build an art spoken attack and an inner spoken attack. I, uh, and I did a credential harvester and talked to you about password disclosure and don't use your password to make attacks. So that is about seven or eight attacks all on my own one and without the user clicking on anything or even realizing that they have attacked. So now it's going to include my talk. But the most important thing is to tell who or inside your phone who is ethics. Doing yeah, the right thing for the right so reasons. In this book, practice makes it perfect, but the discipline can be good. Ethics is about doing the right thing for the right reasons. So, you can have a black belt or you can have some black hat skills. But what is important is that you have a white heart. I think ethics is just the thing that's best described in the uh, quote from the Grand Master Ipian, who says, Use your martial skills for the good of the community. So, while this was happening, I, um, kids started to write to me and ask me, how can you be like me? So, I decided I'm going to share where I was learning with other kids. So, I started a non-profit organization called Cyber Challenge, which teaches kids about the dangers and defenses of cyber security. Um, and also the safety of the technology. These videos are all free. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm filming the video. So she's finishing this last two slides. Video is all free. Ruben. Move on. Move on. We'll go to the next. So, so start selling video sources. Um, Closing thoughts. And closing thoughts. Learn from the cybersecurity, practice cybersecurity, and be disciplined from cybersecurity. Always use your cyber security skills for the good of the community. It's not done yet. It's got one more slide, so. Or you can just go ahead and give a thank you note to me. Thank you. I want to thank my God Jesus Christ for the gifts he has given me. Without him, I would be nowhere here. He raises me up, he uh, looks me high, and I want to go and find him in everything I do, always paying attention to the Lord and him. So, thank him. I want 
think my family, for supporting me and everything they do. I want to thank my dad for teaching me and my mom for sharing me and my little brother Isaac and Puzzle. Um, I want to thank the organizers of this conference, especially Sir Alan Kateri and Mr. Kane Day and, Jay, and uh, uh, Manu, uh, Rugby, and uh, Boro for helping with my demo. They helped me set it up. They uh, gave me a free viral reception point and my contact information is through that Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ruben, I wonder what Talat Kapoor has to say to you, Jackie Gay. But uh, let's put our hands together for him once again. And I'd like to give a to an entire person, Talat Kapoor. And Mr. Yala, please join us on stage to present to the mentor, Ruben. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, let's give our hands together for Mr. Talat Kapoor. Something that I've been promising all our delegates, we still have the virtual reality goggles to give out. And 